I'm Sustainable Sarah and it's International Coastal Cleanup Month. So we're joining the Beach Co-op on some of their cleanups, starting with their New Moon cleanup on Surface Corner in Musenberg, which is where the origins of this organization started. We're here at Surface Corner in Musenberg with founder and director of the Beach Cup, Anya Omadin. What made you found the Beach Cup? Well, I've always had a love for the ocean. I've grown up in Cape Town and I've always just enjoyed swimming and essentially a water baby, that's who I am. This passion really led me to study environmental sciences. Being out in nature is really what makes me happy. What was the reason that you chose New Moon as the alignment for? Well, when I first started looking for a project that I could give back to, um, I wanted to be in and around Musenberg because that's my local surf break. And I started chatting to someone called Professor Peter Ryan, and he suggested that we look at Surfer's Corner at the rocky shore as opposed to sandy beaches which he's been monitoring for about 20 years and specifically looking at plastic and marine litter. And the reason for it being new moon is because that's when the tides are at their most extreme and the rocks are exposed. And this allows us to walk on the rocks and see and monitor the life, but also gather plastic. In your tagline, you mention and beyond, not just beach cleanups. What is your vision for the beyond aspect of the beach club? So really, cleaning up the beach is the starting point, or you could call it the end point. You know, it's the end point from rivers that carry waste to the ocean, as well as stormwater. But essentially, it's, it's the point where you're collecting litter, you're using the Dirty Dozen methodology, becoming more aware of your waste as an individual, and how you can change that, how you can reduce and eliminate single-use plastic, in particular, from your life. So going beyond just doing a beach cleanup essentially. The Beach Co-op has identified the top 12 most commonly found marine debris items so we can understand where this waste is coming from and most of all empower ourselves to make a change. Here are the dirty dozen and the things you and I can do to combat them. Let's take a look at some of the easy fixes to these problems. The first three items on this list can be avoided with just one solution. Use a reusable bottle or flask. Use a tote bag. Refuse packaged food or try buy in bulk. Avoid and encourage restaurants to serve their sweets from a sweet dispenser as opposed to individually wrapped sweets. Instead of a plastic straw, purchase a reusable bamboo steel or glass straw. If you have to use an earbud, purchase bamboo wooden or paper versions. Avoid these or purchase paper or wooden versions. Get a refillable lighter or use matches. Never leave fishing tackle behind and sign petitions to get the fishing industry to mark and label their lines. Avoid these or use LED lights. We're here at the VNA waterfront to head off to Robin Island to do our beach cleanup with Petco and the Beach Co-op for International Coastal Cleanup Day. I'm dressed warm and ready to go. We just arrived at the shipwreck part of Robin Island, which is one of the dirtiest areas of the island and where you can see the most amount of marine debris. We've split into groups and we're going to be collecting data on the top 12 most commonly found items on beach cleanups, otherwise known as the Dirty Dozen. This is done so that we can see exactly where our ocean pollution is coming from. So, let's go join a group and see which is the dirtiest of the Dirty Dozen. crazy we haven't even been here for five minutes and we've already picked up more than two bags full mostly of water bottles but we're seeing pretty much all of the dirty dozen here and really looking at how we and what we need to refuse. International Coastal Cleanup Day happens on the 15th of September every year so People around the world are doing beach cleanups in this month and on that day in particular. And we've been very lucky enough to be invited to come and clean up Robin Island, which is an iconic island and everyone knows 
Robben Island because this is where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned. We would like to try and use the data that we collect this year so that we can compare it to what we do next year and in the years to come. So we're building a data set of what we're finding along the coastline here at Robben Island. Chatting to Camilla, a close friend of the Beach Co-op and one of today's scribes. So I want to know what was your experience as a scribe and what can you say was one of the dirtiest of the dozen? Definitely the bottle cap caps. They're with the, by far. There were so many of them. I would say there was we had probably over 300 versus the other we had about say the others were in like a bracket up to 60. And do you think that the responsibility lies solely with the individual or do you think there are bigger powers at be that need to be held accountable? I do think this is a complex issue and I, it's all stakeholders. Um, it's going to take a team effort from everyone, whether it's advocates, government, private sector, individuals, citizen action. I think everyone has a part to play. We've arrived back at VNA Waterfront after a very mindful and very eye-opening experience with the beach co-op on Robben Island. Most of the plastic, if not all of that plastic waste, is coming from outside of the island with bird life, antelope ingesting it and having disastrous environmental effects, showing us really that we need to, at first point of call, refuse single-use plastic. I'm Sustainable Sarah, stay mindful.